we're going to start talking. We're going to start out by talking about um, fragging um, massive LPS corals and SPS corals. Those are the ones that have a big solid skeleton, something similar to this right here. Um, the skeleton's thick enough that usually using like the diagonal cutters and other stuff of that nature doesn't work very well. Um, like if you take the cutters here, as you can see, it takes a lot to try and cut through that skeleton. Well, one of the best tools to use to cut through a skeleton like this is a tile saw such as this one. This was a $50 7 and a quarter inch tile saw from Harbor Freight. Now, the stock blade that comes on it, um, if you can see from there, is fairly thick. It's about an eighth of an inch thick. Well, with that thicker blade, it actually creates a lot more heat and has to cut through a lot of tissue. Well, I have found a really thin blade. This blade is actually point or no, 0.6 millimeters thick, so it cuts a real thin curve, um, doesn't create half as much heat, and doesn't, cr doesn't damage as much tissue. Works very well. Um, so for a coral like this, you can just take it, cut it through the blade, cut it in however many pieces you want. Now this is a dead skeleton because it's just a lot easier to do major demonstrations with a dead skeleton like this. Um, sometimes on a massive coral like this, the skeleton is going to be real thick and the blade won't go all the way through. So I have found sometimes you've got to like take and trim in this direction to cut it thin enough that you can actually then get into the, the skeleton and cut. Um, go ahead and cut through this. So like what we'll do is we will... Yeah, the saw is a little noisy. That's one of the real nice things about this. I don't know if you could hear me speaking at all, but it cuts real quick. It's quick enough. There's very little heat generated. And when you're cutting through the tissue, the liquid in the tissue helps keep it all cool, so it'll cut through and partially self-cauterize the cut. Um, so there's very little actual tissue damage when you do this. One thing you've got to be careful when doing stuff like this, as I just realized, is, is safety glasses. You're cutting, you've got um, toxins that come out, like if, if we were cutting up some um, zoanthids or paleothoa like this, I'll be honest, I could end up in the hospital if I got some of the juice from them in my eyes. It, it can be very dangerous, um, especially if you happen to be allergic to them. Um, other than that, we're trying to be as safe as possible, that's why we're wearing gloves, and you can see how I'm getting mucus on my fingers from the coral. And if you look inside our thing, you can see how the corals are mucusing up in different areas. And you can see where we've cut here. It's made a nice smooth cut through the, the old skeleton. You can see the polyps are in good shape. I tried not to cut directly through very many of them. See, this one you can see where some of the polyps have been cut through, but these will regenerate and come back very quickly. Okay, what we've been doing so far is the is massive type corals, which a lot of your closed brains, what have you. This can also work very well with some of your branching corals. Um, some of the branching corals of the non non-SPS variety, a lot of times the skeleton is real 
um, brittle and fairly hollow, so if you take the diagonal cutters and try to break it, a lot of times it'll just crush the, the skeleton. And as you can see on this guy, see where the yellow is? That's where there's actual tissue on the skeleton, so you really don't want to take your diagonal cutters and just try and cut it through the, the tissue. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut this whole arm off right here, and then we're going to come back and cut through here and cut it into three, three completely separate heads. One thing I forgot to mention on these, one nice thing about using these diamond blades, do you notice how close I'm getting my hands to the blade? I would never do this with a tooth blade, but with a diamond blade, it grinds, but your um, skin is soft enough that it won't damage it. It'll, it'll get hot and burn you. You can cut through your fingernail, but it's really hard to cut through your skin unless you're, you're really not careful. Okay, we're going to go ahead and glue. Now, most of the corals we've been cutting so far with the massive ones, you don't always have to, to glue them onto a frag plug because they've got a fairly flat base and a lot of times they're bigger than you want on a flag, frag plug. The Duncans that we just cut, especially the two smaller pieces, really need to be glued onto something so you don't lose them. Now, when it comes to gluing corals, there's lots of different glues you can use. Um, there's the two-part epoxies, which for, for usually for gluing on the frag plugs does not work very well. Um, this is the D&D &D Marine product. You've got the um, super glue gels, which is what I really like myself, which this is what we'll be using here in a few minutes. Then you've also just got some thickened super glues. This is a thickened that it's rubberized and is black. Um, some people really like this because when you use it, it comes out black. It looks kind of like sponge around the bottom versus the white super, super glue. And then this is just a, a thicker gel. It's, it's not as thick as the gel, but it's thicker than regular super glue. But I really like to use the gel. Um, what I will do, if you're using, if your frag plugs are dry, it's a lot easier to glue onto them. Take and put a, a decent sized dollop of glue on it. We'll get the medium sized. Okay. We're going to take this and what we're going to do is we're going to try and dry off the skeleton where we had it because the moisture doesn't let it glue very well. And we'll put it in there and kind of twist it around to make sure you get a good bond. And it's about that simple with one of these. Um, and then what I like to do is you'll take, put it in the salt water for a little while and it helps the super, gear, super glue cure a lot quicker. <laughs> and even now already, as you can see, it's fairly solid, but we still want to let it cure for quite a while. Here's an, another type of frag plug. This is um, one of Ryan's reef plugs. So we're going to glue the other one on it. Do the same thing. Put a dollop of super glue. We'll take the little tiny head, which is pretty small, but it'll grow quickly. We'll dry off the base. And as you can see with the gel, the glue doesn't run. That's one reason why I'm Many people really like to use the gel to do their gluing. We get it into place. Okay, this one we're going to glue onto this thing here, but we're going to actually trim the base just a little bit. When we cut it at first, as you can see, it's a little bit of an angle, which worked good for what we're cutting off, but we want it to stick up fairly straight. So we want to trim this nice and straight. So we'll turn the saw back on for a second. the dust off it, put our
in into the glue. And now with it sitting on the flat spot, so we'll turn it just a little bit. There, now that's better. And into the water for curing.